Carl from Cabrillo Marine Aquarium here. Today I'd like to talk to you about sand dollars. I'm sure many of you have found these lying on the beach, maybe even taken a few of them home. But how many of you have ever seen a living sand dollar? Let's head over to the classroom and check a few of them out. So here we have both a living sand dollar, the purple one on the bottom, and the empty skeleton or test up on top. The test is what we normally find on the beach. If we zoom in on the test, you'll notice a flower-shaped pattern called a petaloid. That's fairly characteristic of the sand dollars. If we look at the living sand dollar, you can just make it out if you look closely, that it's a little bit of a pattern, a little bit of different color. That is where they do most of their breathing from. We'll take a closer look at that in a little bit. If I zoom out again, you'll notice that the sand dollars are sitting in the sand. And believe it or not, they actually move. We're going to take a few minutes. It is now 10 minutes after 3. We're going to let this guy sit for a while and see how much he moves. Here in our exhibit hall, we have a display showing what a sand dollar bed, or a large group of sand dollars, would look like in real life. This is only a display, these aren't real sand dollars, but you'll get the idea. You'll notice that they're standing up on their edge. And if we swing around, you'll notice they're all pretty much parallel to each other. And they're also parallel to the current that would be flowing through there. This allows them to get a lot of food while just sitting in one place. They're not really picky eaters. They'll take anything that drifts by that they can trap in their spines or with their tube feet. Yes, they do have spines. We'll take a closer look at them in just a few minutes. Don't worry, they're not gonna poke you. They're just for feeding and moving. Speaking of moving, let's head back and see what our guy's done in the classroom. Okay, it's been about five minutes and you'll notice our living sand dollar has moved. Not very far, of course, he's no speed demon, but he has left a little bit of a trail on the sand, which sometimes you'll see if you find a live sand dollar on the beach and he is partially covered with sand as he's been moving down, trying to burrow back underneath it. Let's take a closer look and see what's going on. All right, we've got our guy under the microscope now, and you can see that he is actually moving. Sand grains moving around back there, and you can now get a better look at some of those spines. We're gonna zoom in a little bit closer but before we go, take a look at the long trailing things on the back. Those long skinny tubes, those are called tube feet. Sea stars have them too, and that's how they move around. But in sand dollars, they're mostly for gathering food. Here you see one of the petals in the petaloid structure that we talked about before. And notice it looks a little bit different than the rest. When we zoom in, and I'm gonna lose focus here, Let's move out. You'll notice those dark structures up on top. Those are tube feet in the pedaloid structure, and that's what the sand dollar is using to breathe with. They function like gills. Oxygen in the water transfers through them. Carbon dioxide that the sand dollar creates is expelled out through that so that the animal can breathe even while it's crawling around in the sand. You get another look, a closer look here at the spines, which sort of look like little clubs. Let me, I'm gonna zoom in again here in a second and take a closer look. We're really zoomed in. You can see the little club shapes. They're sort of pointing off to the right. That's the top of them. These are the spines that cover the body of the sand dollar and help it trap food. In between, as it's moving here, it's going out of focus. In between, you'll notice other structures, which are called secondary spines. And if you look real carefully, you'll notice some long skinny things moving around, which are two feet, look kind of like tentacles. Also inside there, but very hard to see, and I'm not sure we'd be able to see them here, are little pinchers called pedicillaria, which are also used to trap food, especially living things that might get caught by the current and drift underneath the spines. 
rather than letting them take up residence under the spines, the pedicellaria pinch them and the tube feet and the pedicellaria all move these things towards the bottom where the mouth is. Before we look at the mouth though, let's get a quick look at the leading edge of the sand dollar where it's going through the sand. You can see those giant sand crystals off to the left and the spines around there are moving around. They're moving the sand crystals up and around, letting the sand dollar crawl underneath. Like I said, no speed demon, but it does work. If we zoom out, you can see he's getting a good way underneath. And here we can see the whole oral surface. Zoom out a little bit there. You see those channels, those lines running through there. That's where all the food that gets trapped on top and picked up off the bottom gets funneled into those channels, which then cilia, little hair-like structures, move towards the mouth underneath, and that's what they're feeding on. Inside their mouth, they actually have five teeth, called an Aristotle's lantern, that they can use to crunch up the hard bits and just pretty much swallow everything else. I'm gonna turn this guy back over to the aboral side. Aboral meaning opposite of oral. So the oral side, oral is mouth. Aboral would be the back side. Here's another view of the aboral or the oral side, where the mouth is. That's the hole in the middle. The hole off to the edge where my thumb is, that's the anus. That's where he poops. Sometimes if you rattle a sand dollar test, you'll hear some noise inside. That's usually the teeth, like I said, five of them, that have come apart after the animal has died and is rattling around inside. There's a lot of empty space inside this guy, but we're not going to break open even this empty test to show it. Most of, the, most of the tests you find on the beach are going to be broken open anyway, so you can check it out then. I hope you've enjoyed this little look at our sand dollar and hope you'll join us again here soon to discover more exciting things at Cabrillo Marine Aquarium.